Okay, in this video I want to continue our discussion of percentiles. And you'll recall that a percentile is really just a value for a variable, say x, uh, where you've got some percentage of cases with smaller values. Okay, so we've got, uh, we want to find the value of a variable x where there's a specific percentage of cases with smaller values. So if we're looking for the 20th percentile, we want to know the value of x where 20% of our cases have smaller values. And we saw that there was a way to do that with cumulative frequencies and a, cumul and a frequency distribution table in, in the last video. And this time I want to talk about a little more refined way of doing this. Um, the method we're going to talk about is used by statistical packages such as Microsoft Excel uh, and is one way to calculate a percentile. There isn't any standard agreed upon way to always calculate percentiles, but this is, this is one method that works and generally produces uh, consistent results. Um, certainly if you have large, a large sample, uh, then the many different methods of calculating percentiles are fairly close, but here's one way to do it. We're going to begin by calculating the rank or the rank of a particular observation that represents a specific percentile. So we want to know if we were to rank order our distribution from the lowest value to the highest value, at what position along that list would we find the percentile we're looking for? And so we'll take our percentile, divide it by 100, then multiply it by our sample size minus 1, plus 1. And here we've got P is equal to the percentile. And our small n is the sample size. Okay. And so, for example, let's go ahead and create a distribution here. Um, let's say we've got a few observations at 10, 25, 40, 55, 70, and 85. Okay, so we've got these six values here uh, from 10 to 85 that represent our distribution and they're rank ordered from lowest to highest. And let's say that we're looking for, um, let's say we want to find the 30th percentile. Okay, we're looking for the 30th percentile or the value of this distribution at the 30th percentile. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by finding the rank or finding at what position along this this list of numbers would we find the 30th percentile. And so the rank is going to be equal to 30 divided by 100 multiplied by 1, 2, there's 6 observations here. Okay, so our sample size, we have an n of 6 and we'll say that our 6 minus 1 plus 1. Okay, so now we get um, 0.3 times 5, which is going to be 1.5 plus 1, is going to give us a result of 2.5. Okay, and so that gives us the rank or the position along this list. In other words, this value is going to fall between. two and three, number two and number three, in terms of the observations. And so we can go one, here's number two, and here's number three. Okay, so between 25 and 40. So we know that our value is going to be between 25 and 40. And we know that it's going to be half the distance, 2.5, right? So it's going to be half the distance between two and three. And so to solve and find out exactly how far it's going to be, we can calculate what is the position that's halfway between 40 and 25. And so we can do 0.5 and we'll subtract the second observation from the third. So 40 minus 25 times 0.5. That's going to give us 0.5 times 15 
which equals 7.5. Now that we have our 7.5, we know that the 30th percentile is going to be 7.5 units between 25 and 40, and so we can take it's 25 plus 7.5, which is going to equal 32.5. And so 32.5 represents the 30th percentile in this distribution. And so that would be the 30th percentile would be 32.5. Okay. And we could go through another example here. And let's say that we wanted to find the 75th percentile. Okay. So the 75th percentile. Let's go ahead and we'll start off again by calculating our rank. Well, it's a little messy. Let's go ahead and do this again. Let's say we'll calculate our rank, which is going to be 75 divided by 100 times 6 minus 1, our sample size minus 1, plus 1. And that's going to be 0.75 times 5, which is going to be equal to 3.75 plus 1, so we get 4.75. Okay, so the 75th percentile is going to be between the 4th and 5th, right? This is going to be between the 4th and fifth observation. So what we're looking for here is one, two, three, four, something between here and between here. We know that this is going to be the 75th percentile somewhere in there. And to be more specific, it's 0.75 or three quarters of the distance between the 55th, uh, between 55 and 70. Okay, so three quarters of the distance between 55 and 70. We can go ahead and calculate this as being, uh, let's see, we'll get a 0.75 distance. And then we can calculate this as 0.75 times 70 minus 55. We'll subtract the fourth observation from the fifth observation. And so we get 0.75 times 15, which is going to be 11.25. And so now we know that the 75th percentile is going to be 11.25 units greater than 55. So of the 15 units between 55 and 70, we're going to go up 11.25. And so to find the 75th percentile, we can start with the fourth observation, 55 plus 11.25, and this is going to give us 66.25. And here we've got that value right here, which is going to be 66.25, and that represents the 75th percentile. And so this is an example of the more refined way, uh, the sort of the mathematical way of determining what a percentile value for a variable will be more precisely when you have um, this rank ordered list uh, for your, your array of data. And then you can determine exactly where along this array different percentile values fall.